Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrew and I'm with Pure Resonance Audio. Today we're gonna to be talking about our four zone RZMA amplifier. Okay, so before we dive into uh, the back and the front of the amplifier, I do wanna point out that we have two different um, options, the RZMA 120. Uh, which is the original unit has 120 watts per zone. So you have four zones with 120 watts available on each. Um, and just recently we've come out with the RZMA 240, which gives you 240 watts per zone. Um, so if you have an application where you need a lot of speakers, big speaker output, then this might be a great option for you. So I wanna dive in a little closer to the back of the amplifier, specifically looking at the speaker connections and the inputs. Um, you'll see if we can get a little close up on this that there's four zones that are labeled here. So you have zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. Um, so there shouldn't be any confusion on which zone you're on. You'll notice that there is a line out and an output terminal for each zone. The output is going to be your speaker output, so that's where you're going to connect your speaker wires and run to your speakers. Um, the line out is available if you need additional power, so maybe 240 watts is not a, enough for that zone and you want to run another amplifier so that you have additional power available, then you can do that. It's available on each zone. So hopefully there's no confusion there. If you have any questions, definitely let us know. Uh, the next thing I want to point out is all of the different inputs that are available. You'll see them at the bottom. They're also labeled, which is going to be important whenever you start pressing buttons here at the front of the amplifier. Um, you have three XLR mic inputs. Um, it can take a quarter inch as well. You have a couple dual RCA inputs as well, so you have some different options for your sources. Another thing I want to point out, it does have telepaging, so if you have the appropriate adapter to page using your telephone system, um, you can use this amplifier as well. There's dip switches on the bottom here where you can designate what zones you want the telepaging to um, work with. Another thing I want to point out, we do have a paging microphone that's specifically designed to go with these units. It's called the PMZ-16. It runs on Cat5 or Cat6, and the connection is down here at the bottom if you choose to use that with your amplifier. So now I want to talk about the front of the amplifier. Hopefully we've gotten all of the speaker connections on the back. We have our sources, we're ready to roll, and now we have all of these different knobs and buttons at the front. We've got to figure out what to do with them. So let's say I have a source um, going into channel four, which is one of the dual RCA inputs. Um, once you have it connected, you're trying to figure out where you're sending it. You're gonna go to channel four here. That's gonna be your, your knob for that source, so you need to make sure that's turned up to get some audio um, out of it. Below it is where you're gonna select your zone. So maybe if zone one is outdoor and you want it to go out outside, then you're gonna press the zone one button. If you want it to go to the restrooms and it's on zone four, then you're also gonna highlight the zone four button for that source. Now, the biggest thing is making sure that your bottom knobs are adjusted appropriately as well. No matter how much you have the sources knobs turned up, if you do not have your bottom knobs adjusted accordingly, you're never gonna get audio out of your system. The reason for that is your bottom knobs correlate to your different zone outputs, the overall volume output of that particular zone. So if it's turned all the way down, you're never gonna get any audio out of it. So once, let's go back to the example. We have a source on channel four. We are on channel four. We've turned that gain knob up to our liking. We've selected the different zones we want that to be sent to. Now we need to go to the different zone knobs on the bottom and turn those up appropriately. So if we're highlighted on zone one and four up top, we need to make sure zone one and four knobs on the bottom are adjusted appropriately as well. Otherwise, we're never gonna get any audio out of it. So another thing to look out for, this has happened a handful of times, it's super simple, yeah, it's super important. If you've done all of these steps that we've talked about and you're still not getting any audio, let's check and see if the mute button is pressed. So each source has a mute button next to it. If it's highlighted, then you're also not gonna get any audio out of that particular zone because it's muted. So make sure that mute button um, is not highlighted, um, and then you'll be good to go. Another thing we want to talk about, okay, what are these buttons over here? You've talked about these sources, these inputs over here. What does this correlate to? So that's pretty simple. Uh, these amplifiers have a media player built in. Um, 
which controls the Bluetooth. Maybe you want to connect the device via Bluetooth. Maybe you want to preload music onto a USB push drive with WAV or MP3 files, something of that nature. Those are going to be your zone buttons for this particular source. So just like you have these sources um, that correlate to the back inputs, this is your music source, so then you have to designate where you want that particular input to go as well. Okay, so one more important thing that I want to note before we conclude this demonstration is that mic one is a priority input. What that means is if I'm using mic one and maybe I'm using mic two um, and I'm sending those sources to the same zone, if I'm trying to use those at the same time, mic one is always going to override the other inputs. So make sure that um, you keep this in mind because if you don't, then you might get frustrated that your other source is being overridden even though you didn't know it. If that's the case, you might just need to move it over to mic two or mic three if it's available. Um, give us a call and we can figure out how to make it work for you if you're not sure how to do it. But just keep in mind that mic one is a priority input, so it's going to take over all the other ones. All right, so that concludes today's video. I hope this was super helpful and you have a better understanding of how these units function. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can always call us or shoot an email, leave a uh, comment on this video and we'll be sure to address it. Um, until next time, thanks for joining us.